look at this this beautiful heavenly cream of mushroom soup oh, I'll tell you what this is the way to go mm. oh man wait till you try this dish it's absolutely heavenly hello welcome back to Texas cooking today on this episode of Texas cooking today we're gonna make a cream of mushroom soup this isn't going to be your ordinary blended over cream of mushroom soup, no. This is going to be hearty, it's going to be full bodied, this is going to be exciting like no other cream of mushroom soup you've ever tasted. So I'll tell you what, come over this way, let's take a look at these wonderful ingredients we have to work with, and let's make the world's best cream of mushroom soup. Now, on our ingredients that we have here, of course, king of our dish is going to be the mushroom. This is a cream of mushroom. And we also have some leek here. The leek helps to bring out a little more earthy flavor from this. It makes it a little more rich. It doesn't become all leek flavored, though, because we're not going to overpower it with it. Now, what I have here is about a pound of the white button cap and a pound of baby bellas. And you can use also the cremini. And so you'll know the difference. A, a baby bella is just an older version of a cremini. That's all it is. Cremini is when they first come up and they're fresh and young. And a baby bella can have six to eight more days on it than a cremini would have. So that's the biggest difference there. Now, with the leeks, it doesn't matter if you're using small, medium, or large. What we're looking for when we're finished, uh, the amount of leek that we're going to want, is going to be roughly three quarters of a pound to a pound of chopped leek. And uh, I'm going to be cutting this in about half inch ring segments, but we have to process them and clean the insides out first. Over here, other ingredients, the only seasoning we'll use is just a little bit of salt. I have some cheese. I recommend Grana Padano cheese for this. You can also use Parmesan uh, or uh, Romano or Asiago. Any of these Grana cheeses will work great in this dish. And we're looking for about three quarters of a cup to a cup of freshly grated cheese there. Half a cup of flour, four tablespoons cubed butter, and some olive oil. We're going to use about a half a cup to uh, three quarters of a cup of olive oil, roughly. One quart of chicken stock. Now, if you're vegetarian and you want to uh, use something different, go with a vegetable stock on this, okay? I have back here one quart of heavy cream and right over here, two cups of milk. Now, I probably won't use all of that milk. I might not use any of it. It really depends on the viscosity of the soup once I get all of the rest of this combined. If I feel I want a little more liquid there, I have milk set aside just for that, okay? Now, let's move right on to processing our vegetables. Let me show you how to get these taken care of and cut up just the right way. Now we're ready to take care of slicing up all of our goodies. Uh, what we want to do on processing these mushrooms, I don't necessarily like to use the stalk on a mushroom when I'm cooking it into something like this. So what I'm going to do is just take those and push them sideways and that will snap them right out of there. That's all you have to do. Now, we have finished removing all of those stems. So what I want to do is prepare all of my caps for cooking. Now, some of my caps I'm going to be chopping up, and some of them I'm going to have sliced. And so what I'm going to be wanting are some nice little uh, quarter inch thick, or actually I should say about eighth inch thick slices of these mushrooms. And the whole thing done just that okay, way. Okay, so we have arrived at that point where we have all of our mushrooms chopped up. Now, what we're going to be doing is cooking some of these as sliced mushrooms, but we're also going to cook some of them as chopped mushrooms. And the idea here is I'm trying to get a more bold flavor release without having to use an electric blender or food mill or anything like that. So what I'm wanting to use is anywhere from a quarter to a third of the mushrooms of each batch. And since they're all going to be chopped, it doesn't really matter if I chop them together. I'm looking at, like I said, somewhere between a, a quarter and a third of each. And I think I have that right about there. So we're going to chop these up and put them all up in this bowl. And they don't have to be like fine chopped. Okay, we're almost there. 
That didn't take that long, did it? Not that hard. So, we're gonna go with it at that point, just like that. And what we have pieces here uh, from like about half inch size pieces down to maybe eighth inch uh, type pieces and that's just perfect. It's a good random assortment. Well, now that we have our mushrooms out of the way, we're going to get down to our leeks. Now these are honestly the smallest leeks I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, if you were going to be using a large leak, and they come out pretty big sometimes, about the size of your arm, if you're using a big one like that, probably one to one and a half is going to be enough. Uh, if you're using medium sized ones, uh, which are about twice this size, then you're probably going to be needing about two of those. So what we're looking for, like I said, though, is by the time we're done, we want close to about three quarters of a pound to a pound of uh, just the lighter green and a little bit of this darker green up here, but not a whole lot, and I'll show you how much. I'm remove that green, and as long as I'm gentle, that shouldn't break open on me. So I need to do this on all of them, make my little cut down the side, and then we're going to wash these out. Now what we want to do, just take our leaves, give them a good wash on the inside, we just peel back those layers, let the water run down through it. If there's any loose dirt in there, then wash it right out. Now, let's get on with processing these out. We're going to start by removing that root. And what I want to do is to cut each one of these stalks into about 3 8 inch thick slices. Just like that. Now, a half inch should be a little bit too wide and I think quarter inch a bit too narrow, but that 3 8 seems to be dead on. Now that we have all of this finished and chopped up, beautiful, isn't it? These, if you'll notice, they probably didn't make you cry. They have a very mild odor and they are just wonderful tasting. Like I said, mild and earthy. So let's go ahead and start on our soup. It's about time, isn't it? Now I went ahead and ground up that Grana Padano cheese and that one little block did provide me with more than enough cheese for this dish, okay? So I finished that one out. I don't ever bother with that rind because it's just a little too tough to use in cooking. So, there we have beautiful Grana Padano. Now, on for our cooking. We have a couple of pans out here, one large fry pan and a pot with a large wide bottom on it. Now, if I was cooking a small amount, I would just do it in this one pot, but I have a lot to cook here. There's a lot of vegetables, so I want to spread that initial cooking out between both of these pans. Now, we need to know whether our pans are hot enough, and of course, we just use the water method. Okay, that water evaporated immediately, which tells me that that pan is not quite hot enough, but it's getting there. Okay, water droplets are just now beginning to dance in it. So, what I want to do is go ahead and get some oil in my pans. And I want to use, to start with, right about two tablespoons now, worth. Put all of my cremini in the first one, and we're going to put those white button caps right in that second one. Go ahead, turn those mushrooms over, get them well coated with the olive oil. The olive oil is going to soak right in. The mushrooms are like a, a little sponge. Okay, it's just been a few minutes now, only about four minutes, I would say and I'm getting a nice reduction on the side. So what I want to do next, and that was, I used two pans just to get this started. I want to combine these, like so. Pull the rest down. And that's one thing uh, mushrooms are going to do, is they're going to release moisture and they're going to reduce in size and they're going to cook down. That's why using two pounds wasn't really outrageous on this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pour in our chopped mushroom. And again, we're going to need some oil. I'm going to stir this so we get some cooking on the smaller pieces. Back up to the high heat again. OK, 
Okay, we have that in. They're gonna start cooking and releasing. And I wanna go ahead at this point and put this leak, all of our leak in there. Now what we're gonna see here is as this cooks, we're gonna see again a reduction in total volume. So I expect this to drop down not quite half of what it is now, but about uh, to two-thirds of what it is now. Something else I want to do, I'm going to cover that, and as it cooks, it's going to go ahead and build some steam. That steam is going to work on those uh, leaks on the top, and it's going to cause them to wilt and to sweat, and uh, as they do that, that's going to soften them enough to make them a good quality soup and easy for eating. We don't want anything in this to be really too firm, but we want a really hearty, kind of chunky type of soup in this cream of mushroom soup. All right, we're right about five minutes total cooking time right now. I'm just going to add a little bit of salt to this. I'm going to put in about a teaspoon. Now, my total cook time has been up to about 10 minutes now. And if you'll notice, this has reduced a great amount, just like I mentioned that it would do. I'm way down. So, what we want to do now is just go ahead and work in the butter. Break that apart. This is one we want to sprinkle in our flour. We'll stir this a little bit and add the rest. This is going to make a rather thick mess. Some of it's going to stick to the bottom of the pan. Don't worry about that. What we got to do now is cover this because I have to cook this flour down. It needs to experience some heat for a few minutes at least. Here's where we add in that extra fat, that extra olive oil I mentioned to you before, bringing it up to about that three quarters of a cup mark. There we go. Now, while this looks like something of a mess right now, in a little bit, it's going to look heavenly. So, cover that again and keep on cooking. We're going to, like I said, cook about uh, another four to five minutes on this. And then, once that's cooked, that flour fully, and we need to stir it about once every minute. Once the flour's cooked in fully, then we're going to mix in our liquids. I have just arrived at about four minutes of cooking time. I'm smelling a good odor from the flour itself included in this, and it's starting to brown slightly on the bottom. So I want to go ahead and put in that stock. And we're going to bring this up to a boil, and we're going to let it simmer for a little while. Our mixture has now been cooking for just a little bit over 18 minutes. I've been stirring this about every minute and a half to two minutes, gently. It's just gotten thicker, of course, as the moisture steamed out. And so, we're at that point now. And we're gonna start working in that cream. So like I said, you're looking at about 20 minutes worth of simmering. So I'm gonna put my flame back under it, but I'm gonna keep it low. I want to start working in some of that cheese. With all this cream, it will just melt right into it. I've just got to bring this up in temperature. And at this point, I want to put a thermometer in it so I can kind of keep a close eye on what that temperature will be. This is just a real smart thing to do whenever you're cooking with dairy, especially dairy. Um, 
That way you can get a good idea of exactly what is or is not happening on it. So let's bring this up in temperature. And I'll restart the film as it comes up to about 150. Now my soup has come up over 150 degrees and this is a perfect time for me to test this to get a good idea of where my flavors are, how it's going on in this, and whether or not I need some salt. Now I'll say this, the flavor of that is really warm, inviting, delicious, and just a little bit more salt is called for. So I'm going to put in right about a teaspoon. So I'm going to work that down. Do not allow your temperature to come over 180 degrees. Okay. And if you don't have a thermometer, a good sign is you're building a froth on the edge, little bubbles, and uh, you know, just like when you're heating cream or scalding milk, you get that frothing on the edges and the steaming, of course. And you don't want to bring it to a boil. That's the idea there. Now my soup's temperature is just a little bit under 175 degrees, so I'm dropping the temperature on this. I'm going to give it another stir, and then it is time to plate this up. Now, okay. Good hearty soup. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? This is a cream of mushroom that will really speak to you. And one more ladle. There we go, good and hearty. Now, the items that we have for decorating our soup are, as I mentioned before, we have some of the green onion, but also have just a little bit of cream here. Now, this soup has changed color to the point where I can use this. Let me see if I can do this left-handed. I just want to make a nice little dot. And I want to do another one right here. I want to do three of these. To make a design in that is simple enough, what we're going to do, there's a couple ways of doing this. You can use your paring knife like I used for cutting up my uh, there we go. I'm just going to pull that out into a nice little star. The other way, we can use a toothpick, if I can get one of these. Let me left hand to this for you. Now what I'm doing is pulling out and up at the same time. This is kind of tricky. There we go. Now, of course we want a little bit of the green running across the top. Well, there it is. Beautiful cream of mushroom soup. This gets down to simplicity, more of a country style soup, delicious, hearty. Oh man, the marriage of flavors on this is just remarkable. It really is. Adding that leek into a cream of mushroom really sets it apart. Like I said, it gives it a more full body, better flavor. Mm. It didn't stop being the cream of mushroom, but it did become a lot heartier. I tell you what, wait till you try this. You're going to be hooked on it. It's going to become one of your favorites. Well, thank you. Thank you for watching my show. Thank you for watching Texas Cooking today. And a special thank you to my subscribers. Thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Got some great stuff here. And you have a good day. Thank you for watching Texas Cooking Today, the show where you can get great recipes and the best techniques are taught. 
please subscribe to Texas Cooking Today, where you will always find something hot and ready to eat.